Hey, what's up guys? Matt Spinks again here from Fort Wack, Indiana, the Firehouse Projects. Uh, just wanted to share this week again um, something I've been sharing on recently uh, about objective versus subjective reality. And this will help a lot of you in understanding the gospel of Jesus because, uh, yeah, well, let me just jump right into it. <laughs> the gospel of Jesus Christ presents a whole new reality um, which can seemingly coexist at the same time uh, with the old reality. And uh, I'm going to put in the link of this video a link to one of my older podcasts on uh, Old Covenant versus New Covenant. Um, because uh, <clears throat> what I've begun to see over the last couple of years is that um, the Old Covenant was simply God interacting with mankind within the fallen reality that they had created um, with the power and authority that they'd been given over uh, you know, the created world. We'd been given uh, life you know, from the very beginning to, to rule and reign over this earth to take care of it. And uh, we actually created this, uh, this quote-unquote fallen reality, which is simply uh, a, a, a something that's entirely, like seemingly real. Um, it can be just as tangible as any thing you know that you know of uh and yet it's still a subjective world in the truest sense not uh really real and so um it feels real it's very tangible and tasteable and touchable and most people are convinced of this it's the it's the way of seeing the world after the flesh or simply uh you know seeing the world through the eyes of of independent self-existence through the eyes of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, um, the lower realm. And so uh, once a, you're awakened, uh, you know, sometimes you can look back at the Old Testament and not understand it because you're beginning to live from a new world and that was God interacting within uh, the the lower realm or the, the false world. And so this, this is confusing for a lot of Christians because we've been brought up with a very, uh, you know, logical uh, understanding within that subjective reality. And so, anyway, let me just back up and begin to speak about the objective versus the subjective. Um, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Matthew 4, 17, Mark 1, 15, Jesus came to say, hey, uh, the kingdom of heaven is at hand repent and believe this good news. And that was the gospel, that the kingdom of heaven is here. And a, a way that I've found to say it, which I believe is true to the text, true to the original intent of Jesus, but sounds a little bit different that helps people, is to say, heaven is already here, guys. <laughs> heaven on earth was always God's intent, and Jesus came to awaken us to that realm. Colossians 3, verse 11 is really key here. It says that uh, Christ is all and in all. And I believe that is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus Christ living in God, just in the presence and the weighty glory with everything uh, according to its original design and intent. Everything fully restored and awakened to God and living in absolute perfect bliss. This is true reality. This is what I call the objective reality. It is what's truly true. It's what God knows and it's what awakened people begin to know. Uh, Christ as all in, in all. Everything connected, everything is one. Everything is heaven on earth. No more sickness, no more pain, no more anything negative, no more sin, no more death. Uh, anything that you may have thought was reserved for heaven is here now. And this is the objective reality. This is what's truly true. Now, a lot of people have a, a problem because they're like, yeah, but I still see sickness. I still see, you know, kids getting molested and raped all around the world. I still see, you know, tragedy and families and, and wars and, and all kinds of crazy stuff happening. And that is um, simply your perspective of the subjective reality. And uh, it can feel very true. And in fact, like, it still causes real pain. And it's, it's, it's massive that uh, the subjective be aligned uh, to, to match up with this objective when we see the gospel and begin to live from what's truly true, the subjective will line up. 
And uh, so it's all about awakening to that, that we could be the change and begin to manifest the whole new world. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, in many translations, says uh, there's a whole new world now in Christ. And almost every translation says, the old is completely gone. Behold, all things have become new. Whoa, so what if all things are truly new right now? Oh my God. Like your family, your finance, your health, your everything. This is what the gospel declares. Now, what people struggle with is that that's not what they've experienced yet. They've still been experiencing this subjective reality. And so, uh, I want to read you a couple of scriptures that seemingly contradict each other regarding this. There's a lot of people out there right now worried about uh, universalism, worried about, uh, you know, are so much of the church, are they becoming universal? Um, firstly, I wouldn't worry too much because the early church fathers uh, disagreed on the matter. Um, Gregory of Nyssa, Origen, a number of the church fathers seem to be very bold universalists. It's not included in any of the creeds what you have to believe about that. And so there's a lot of room. I, I, I honestly embrace uh, believers of any perspective regarding that. Um, the, the key is, do you believe Jesus Christ have you experienced an effortless gift of salvation? Are you proclaiming that to the nations through your life and love? Uh, that to me is way more important. But there's two passages that may, that depending on which one you emphasize more, there's a bunch of these passages throughout Scripture, but I just want to you know, uh, bring up a couple today. One would seem to be totally universalist. The other one would seem to be totally, uh, you know, uh, that every person has to uh, undergo certain things in order to be saved, and so some are and some aren't. I want to read these two, and what I want to show is that one speaks of the objective reality and the other speaks of the subjective. And then we'll, we'll go from there. But wow, Shaka, have a drink of <laughs> Jesus. Begin to feel the weighty presence and, and let your mind of Christ understand what I'm about to say here. So in Romans 5, verse uh, 18 and 19, this is a passage that a lot of people that seem like they're universalist would quote. And it says, well then, as one man's trespass, speaking of Adam, issued doom for all, so one man's act of redress, Christ, or one man's act of righteousness, issues in acquittal and life for all. So it sounds like all were in, uh, included in Adam, and there, but then also how much more all were included in Christ. The next verse says, just as one man's disobedience, Adam, made all the rest sinners, so one man's obedience will make all the rest righteous. Christ. And so it talks about all being condemned, but then all being made righteous. Now that's what I believe the objective reality. What all God sees is Christ. All God sees is all men uh, were included in Adam, but, but ultimately all men are included in Christ and seen as perfect in Christ. But then if you want to look over to Romans chapter 10, this is the, the other side of the coin, so to speak. Romans 10, 9 says, Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. So it's saying that here's these two things that you have to do in order to be saved. Confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Now, that would sound like there's some conditions on it. What I want to present here is that one of these is the objective reality, I believe Romans 5, of how God sees things. Romans 10 is how your experience will transform when you begin to see what God sees. Now, here's the issue, guys. So many people are talking about focusing on one or the other, and I do want to pick a side on it. I believe that the gospel is to proclaim the object of reality. Uh, man's religious endeavors have always been to point to the subjective and try by some sort of strategy, or even if it's just the slightest like little thing, but trying to change our subjective reality to, to grow or to get, to get higher, like trying to save mankind, when the Bible clearly says that Jesus already saved mankind. Now, that can become confusing because you're like, listen, I know I wasn't saved. My life was terrible. I was living in all kinds of horrible things. No, I, I, wanna, I want to, to, to disagree with that. That's what you experienced. But we're not uh, rewriting reality based on our experiences. Um, in our experience, we would always be confused. We would always, it's always a continual process that will never arrive at full awakening and never full, full transformation. 
The only way to see full awakening and full global transformation is as a pure gift. And I want to declare to you that that gift has already been given in Christ. And so I, I hear your hearts, guys, those that have been focusing on the subjective. Uh, you want to see lives changed. And you've seen the power of Jesus Christ invade a life and take them from a place where they seem to be uh, oppressed, depressed, struggling, and you've seen them transform. So you're like, listen, there's a process that has to take place to move them from darkness to light. But I want to say, to focus at all on this subjective will always, it, you may see some steps forward, but they'll always end up going back. It's like three steps forward, four steps back. You know, you might see some breakthrough for a while, then a lot of people see breakthrough saying, here's the steps I followed. Then they see a little breakthrough, they write a book, right? They sell thousands of books. But what you don't usually hear about is after the guy writes the book, or even sometimes in the midst of when the guy's writing the book about all his steps, uh, his steps stopped working for him. And a lot of times they were just as oppressed or depressed as they were before. They saw a measure of breakthrough. Listen, changing the subject of reality is called religion. And religion will always offer you a little bit of breakthrough, but it never can bring long-term peace, love, uh, uh, heavenly experience. Because only the, we were hopeless in our struggles to try to grow. We were hopeless in our, in our attempts to try to, to transform the world. We needed a savior. Jesus came and already did it. And what we're beginning to see, there's a, there's a group of people that are beginning to focus on the object of reality, which is what God always knew to be true. That, that God never withheld heaven from us for a moment. That, that you were always included in this whole new world. This is how God can say things like, I can't even remember sin. Right? You're like, well, I remember sin. And it's because you've been living in a world that God is not conscious of primarily. God entered into that in Christ. And God will allow you to live in your subjective world as long as you want. That's what was happening through the Old Testament. And God was interacting. But none of those were ultimately God's heart. Ultimately, God wants to awaken you to Colossians 3.11, that Christ is all and in all. And then you'll begin to see effortless transformation of everything around you as your consciousness of what's already true, of what the goodness that's always been uh, revealed in, in God, the goodness that's always been given, uh, begins to arise. And so I want to encourage this, guys. I know some of you are afraid that if you start telling everyone that everything is perfect and everything is finished, you're like, well, I don't know if we'll see all the people getting set free or their lives being transformed. I want to tell you, there's a way that seems right to a man, Proverbs says. And that way is manipulating the subjective reality through our efforts, even through what we think is our preaching. Listen, your preaching is simply declaring, the, the preaching of true gospel is just declaring what already is, not an attempt to change anything. Um, if it's coming from an attempt, it will somewhere stem from your own efforts. But if it's simply a, rea a realization and an enjoyment, you'll see so much more power. I want to tell you guys, like, I did the, the subjective, trying to change the subjective thing for so long. I did a lot of trying to cast out demons. And sure, we'd see demons come out. I'm not unfamiliar with that. But I've come to a greater place where I believe a declaration of the truth or simply a realization. I don't even have to speak uh, because I've seen that everyone's already set free. Now, does that mean I don't want to see their subjective realities change? No, I do, but I've just seen there's a way more powerful way of declaring the object of truth, declaring what's really true, rather than addressing the lies and trying to uh, affect every lie. Whoa! I hope this helps, guys. I know it can seem pretty confusing, but I just want you to, to see throughout the scripture that can seem contradictions. Like one guy will say, well, First Timothy says Jesus is the Savior of all men. And in another place it says, uh, these are the things that have to take place in order for you to be saved. Um, they're not disagreeing with one another. One is simply saying how someone's subjective experience will be transformed. The other one, though, is proclaiming the actual gospel, the truth of the gospel, which is what ultimately changes or not even just changes, but it just reveals this subjective realm as simply like a mist or, or whatever. Uh, 
So I know, wow, it's like, you know, putting language to some of the stuff that we're experiencing is crazy, but I believe we're living in a greater day than having to go around to every individual and personally cast out every demon, you know, or whatever. I believe we're living in a greater day than having to go around and, and literally lay hands on every person and press in for any sort of breakthrough or something, or, or even lay hands on every person. I've seen times, guys, that we're just speaking this gospel as, as hundreds and even thousands of people will begin to get healed uh, just by the realization of the truth. So it's like, I, I believe that there's going to be a far greater amount of fruit that's going to be coming forth, guys, bam, out of a declaration of the object of reality uh, rather than focusing on this lower world that has seemed so true, guys. Um, and honestly, a lot of ministers that you know are still, they still have some level of faith in this subjective world. They haven't truly seen that Christ is all in all yet. And uh, I would say, honor them, bless them. You don't have to like even try to argue with them. But listen, you want to connect with what's truly true. You want to be a part of a pure objective reality. You want to see the world as Christ is all in all. And then, oh my God, like it's amazing what changes uh, there. You see the whole new world that was always already right before your eyes. And uh, it is a wild thing, guys. So I hope that helps. Um, again, I'm always available for questions or discussion. I love you guys so much. You're always welcome to come out and hang out with us. And I uh, wanted to invite you. We've got a few events coming up. Check out our event page, um, thefirehouseprojects.com, uh, and, and click events or, uh, or parties or whatever, or something like that we got going on. But we're, we got uh, a, lot of, a lot of cool things coming up. So, so check that out. Um, just, yeah, <laughs> that's about it, guys. I love you so much. And uh, talk to you next time. Bye.